What's going on, buddy? My name is Elfrens. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. And today we're checking out more SCPs. This is SCP-8098, Normal Ammunition is Boring. Why not spice it up with, a, with different flavors? I have absolutely no idea what I'm getting into here. The thumbnail intrigued me, and so did the title of today's video. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into this, because I don't know what else to really say. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get right into this in 3, 2, 1... Alarms blare around the jewelry store. The three robbers, decked out in balaclavas and wielding handguns, start to panic. What? One raises his gun and fires off a shot, hoping to bring down the emotional temperature in the store. But they it does shoot the guy? much worse. It hits the cashier in the chest. He clutches his bleeding heart and collapses against one of the display cases. It's gone Shit. too far. Shit, it's gone they need to bail very bad. Uglier. Little do they know ugliness is on its way towards them one of them opens fire and blows out the glass door for a quick escape they can already hear the sirens getting closer but maybe if they get to the getaway car in time they can make a clean break but before they can reach the car a strawberry hits the leader of the three robbers in the face he pauses for a moment baffled and then turns to see a stern solemn figure standing 10 feet away from them decked out in a gray suit and leveling the ultimate 1970s hand cannon, the 44 Magnum. It is the one and only Dirty Harry. <laughs> Dirty Harry. <laughs> the cowboy cop who asks no questions and takes no prisoners. Smoke is rising from the gun's barrel. I've seen that movie, by the way. And this is the SCP? As though a shot has just been fired. But did a strawberry come out of that gun? There's no time to think. The three scramble in different directions, but Harry's aim is true. He turns the magnum to robber number one and fires. A burst of electricity, like a crack of lightning, comes well, blasting out of the barrel of the weapon and zaps him so hard that for a brief moment, you can see his glowing skeleton. He falls to the ground, stunned, with smoke coming out of him. Harry calmly thinks, one down, two to go. Robber number two okay. is scrambling to the getaway vehicle, hoping that perhaps he can still salvage the escape attempt. But Harry aims on him, and it's all over. He squeezes the trigger of his magnum, and out of the barrel of the gun comes a concentrated jet of boiling hot coffee, squirting right Ow. into the robber's face. He screams in pain and falls to the floor, clutching his scalding face. Only one robber remains running for his life when Harry aims the gun and fires. An angry cat flies out of the barrel and lands on robber number one, disabling him in a flurry of screeching and scratching. The robber falls to the ground and Harry approaches, aiming the magnum down at him. He growls his iconic line. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth, in all this excitement, I kind of lost Only fired four. But being We're feeling lucky, four, punk. Magnum, Are you? powerful handgun in the world and would blow your head clean off. You gotta ask yourself. But why is Harry question. here? Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? He squeezes the trigger, and an entire grand piano fires out, <laughs> crushing the <laughs> robber. To any movie buffs out there, you've probably already gathered that this scene does not take place in the 1971 Clint Eastwood neo noir Dirty Harry. It does not. But it could have. I've seen that Harry's movie. His iconic 44 Magnum was loaded with SCP 8098. A collection of oh, it's bullets, bullets. That caused the SCP Foundation. So it's not the Magnum itself; it's bullets. Foundation far much more I trouble than mark? you ever would have imagined. Huh. It all started. Oh, that was just scratch my head. Well, not my head, but Kansas, neck. What am I saying by lately? The foundation, after several reports of strange anomalous activity, they discovered a number of anomalies inside the main barn. In addition to a large stockpile of weapons, most pertinent among them is a pair of 44 Magnum revolvers and a small cardboard box full of 44 Magnum rounds labeled with the brand Morphic Munitions, along Morphic with slogans munitions. like Try to Collect Them All and So Many Different Flavors to Collect. This immediately raised flags just on the level of common sense. Who's flavoring bullets? This warranted further explanation. And along with the rest of the anomalous objects, the morphic munitions were taken back to Site 18 for further study. Wait, wasn't they that were designated SCP-8098? Never mind. That was a doctor from a previous SCP video I had reacted to. That was the same model. I do not remember his name. If anybody remembers his name, let me know. 
little did the researchers know, it's been like a things couple were weeks. about to get incredibly, incredibly strange, even by the standards of the SCP Foundation. The research on SCP-8098 was conducted primarily by Dr. Velez and Dr. Eliza, and they soon learned to Eliza, facts, I think it was that thing. each of the different flavored bullets had a different anomalous effect when fired, and that these anomalous effects only took place when fired out of a 44 Mosquito in here, where'd he go? Well, let's not beat around the bush here, folks. Played had a I different said. anomalous effect when fired, and that these anomalous effects only took place when fired out of a 44 Magnum. But let's not beat around the bush here, folks. We know why you're here. You want to know all about the freaky flavors and their different anomalous effects. Don't worry. We'll tell you exactly what Dr. Velez and Dr. Eliza found in a freaky flavor lightning round. In the first test, they tried the strawberry flavored bullet. As you probably predicted, it caused a single non-anomalous strawberry to fire out of the gun's barrel, splattering against the wall. Harmless, but delicious. In the second test, they tried the Deadly to me. bullet. This time, it fired out a concentrated jet of hot coffee that maintained water pressure for 25 seconds before running out of steam, enough to fill about two and a half coffee mugs. This coffee also proved to be non-anomalous. In the third test, they loaded the electricity-flavored bullet and fired it at a small metal spoon to test its conductive properties. This didn't go quite as smoothly as the researchers hoped, as the electricity zapped around the room and interfered with electronic equipment, leading to the uh -oh. test being suspended. Afterwards, when the round was removed from the cylinder, it was notably smaller than when it was first loaded. The fourth test was a stranger. It must have lost its current when it was fired. The bullet entered into the magnum was claimed to be cat flavored, and it lived up to expectations, firing a three year old American shorthair cat that proved to be completely non anomalous in and of itself. For the cat lovers in our audience, don't worry. The cat was safely rehomed after the test. Thank in God. the fifth test, <laughs> the bullet was labeled entropy. When the gun was fired, nothing happened. But when the researchers checked the cylinder, the bullet was gone. In the sixth test, the bullet was flavored anger. It was also the first time a test was conducted on a D-class subject, who upon having the bullet fired at him was physically unharmed, but entered a prolonged state of rage, shouting profanities and refusing to comply with any of the researchers' commands for an hour. The seventh test involved a recycling-flavored bullet fired at a plastic water bottle. This resulted in both the transmutation of the bottle and the table. The bottle recycled itself into a small Tupperware container, and the table oh. became two large blocks, one of solid plastic and the other of solid metal. This brings us to test number eight, the fascinating what? teleportation flavored bullet. This one fired a ball of purple light that upon making contact with the wall, teleported the firer, along with all of their clothes and personal effects, to the area where the ball of light had come into contact with. These previously inconsequential tests started to take a turn for the disastrous during uh -oh. test number nine, when the black hole flavored magnum round was tested. This would also incidentally be the only time the black hole flavored ammo was tested, as the data for this test was expunged and all black hole flavored rounds were moved to another site. This left only a collection of rounds ominously marked mystery flavor which had a whole host of strange okay. and often freaky effects. These include firing a blow pop brand lollipop that exploded and shattered against the wall when fired, but seemed otherwise non-anomalous. A grand okay. flavor that somehow fired out of the barrel before smashing against the ground, causing substantial damage. A small flame like that of a lighter, which fired out of the barrel of the Magnum and remained in operation for 28 seconds before going out. And even a copy of SCP-2081, an 2081. page hardback book entitled Making Your Dreams Your Reality, Lucidity for Beginners. Interestingly, huh? after the most recent test, a copy of SCP-2081 was reported missing from containment. This suggested a vital piece of information. SCP-8098 ammo doesn't create any of the items it fires. It just takes them from it takes other places them away. around the world. While this seemed like just an incidental fact at first, it would soon have dire consequences for the researchers at Site-18. It started Why? with a researcher who misplaced a key in the containment locker near all the SCP-8098 instances. When he went searching for the key, he instead found one of the anomalous bullets labeled key flavored. This was only the start of a concerning trend. Next, when Dr. Enya found that her favorite coffee mug was missing, she found a coffee mug flavored bullet in the Site-18 break room. 
When the sink went missing in the Site 18 bathroom, sure enough, they found a sink-flavored bullet. In a D-Class's temporary holding cell, they found a human-flavored bullet, and the D-Class uh -oh. in question was missing, save for his abandoned clothes. A mystery bullet even appeared in the holding cell of SCP-2182, an anomalous staff that would absolutely get us demonetized if we tried to describe it. This Wait, 2182? Did I react to 2182? It sounds familiar. I'll just take a look back at some of my previous SCP reactions. Very anomalous quality to SCP-8098 sparked serious concern in the lead researchers on the case. A letter sent from Dr. Eliza to Dr. Velez read, I'm getting increasingly concerned with the recent developments regarding SCP-8098. With what we have observed, it appears that random objects and people within Site-18 are being turned into new SCP-8098 instances, with no currently discovered means to revert to their previous states. I know that you and many others are already partially aware of this, but I'm surprised at the lack of attention that this has been receiving. For all we know, a researcher or an important anomaly within the facility could be next. I theorize that the cause of these effects may be due to the high concentration of SCP-8098 within its dedicated locker room in Site-18. The reason I believe this is due to the fact that after the first new instance of SCP-8098 was discovered in that locker, more and more have been appearing throughout the facility. Oh, and also, its object class should probably be changed from safe to Euclid. It was undeniable that Dr. Elisa had a point. The object class was changed, and the ammo instances were separated across the facility to test whether Eliza's theory held water. However, from that was it point, true? more items around Site-18 began getting transmuted into SCP-8098 bullets, proving <laughs> Eliza's separation theory to be correct. Things got even more peculiar when a confetti-flavored bullet appeared in a Site-18 locker room. Despite there being no confetti previously in that room, weirder still, there was a mysterious note packaged with the bullet. It read, Yay, yay, yay! Congratulations! You are the first person to collect 30 different flavors of morphic munitions. To celebrate this wondrous occasion, here is a unique, rare, one-of-a-kind flavor of morphic munitions for you to sink your teeth into. Or to put into a gun, I guess. Which is okay. We don't care how you use your morphic munitions. The point is, you're the first one to collect 30 unique morphic munitions flavors, and we wanted to celebrate that. It wasn't easy to make this one, I'll tell you that. <laughs> ah, there was no confetti for miles around here, but that's okay. You deserve oh. it, you amazing little collector you. Anywho, keep your eye out for new waves of morphic munitions in your area. In response to this, the researchers tried Plan B to see if it would elicit a different response, splitting up the anomalous bullets and sending them to different facilities. Not long after this, a bullet labeled Confusion Flavor appeared in Site-18 with another attached note. This one read, Hey, hey, it's me again. I noticed that it seems you gave a lot of your morphic munitions away. <laughs> um, was this intentional by any chance? Regardless, you are, um... Well, you are both the first ones to collect 30 unique morphic munitions flavors, so, um, yeah. I was just under the impression that you guys like collecting morphic munitions, so I kept making more for you all. Now I'm sort of starting to doubt that. Oh, actually, you know what? I know why you did all that. You wanted to start a new, fresh collection of morphic munitions. Yeah! Oh, you guys are so very, very kind. I'll be sure to increase the amount of morphic munitions you all are able to find for being such nice collectors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Be sure to collect all these new, awesome, unique morphic munitions flavors. <laughs> Clearly, more drastic measures were needed. Authorization was given to start destroying new instances of anomalous bullets, starting with the strawberry bullet. When the Foundation attempted to melt it down in the furnace, it exploded, releasing 10,000 strawberries in all directions and causing well, minor shit. injuries to surrounding personnel. Not long after this, a new note was discovered. It read, Ah! Yes, please do not destroy any of the bullets inside of any morphic munitions containers. Bad effects. Bad, 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 bad. You can use them in a gun, find whatever, but do not break open any of the bullets. Please! No! No! Please! The rest of the page beyond this point is filled with the word bad repeated over and over. At and least Dr. they're giving Eliza a warning. Dr. Velez racked their brains on how to deal with this increasingly bizarre set of circumstances, as their attempts to communicate with the mysterious entity leaving the notes all fell flat. During the middle of one of their more heated arguments, one more note appeared behind them. It read, 
Okay, okay, fine, I get it. I get the hint. You guys don't want any more morphic munitions, is that right? I'm sorry, I just, I haven't been able to do this in so long. It felt good to see someone take interest in what I was making again. But I suppose I just can't force someone to like what I create. I'm sorry for turning all those things into morphic munitions. If I could turn them back, I would, but, but I don't know how. I hope that you can accept my apology. I didn't want it to get so out of hand, but it seems like it has. Well, I'll be around still, but I promise to no longer hurt anyone. I, I promise. If I do hurt anyone else in the future, then then I'll, I'll feel very bad about it. I promise. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry about everything that's happened. I hope you all don't hate me, but I understand if you do. Uh, anyways, goodbye. There was never another oh. horrific munition bullet discovered again after that. And personally, we think the world is a darker place for their absence. That went from very interesting to very depressing very quickly. <laughs> um, I'm not really too sure what to say on that. Otherwise, other than the concept is, for it is very good. Also, I like the uh, Dirty Harry reference at the beginning of this video. I had seen that movie from beginning to end <laughs> with my dad several years ago um but who was making the bullets though like just some random create creator like a god figure or something was creating them and he was just leaving notes for the uh, munitions i get it's a little hard to wrap my head around a little bit but otherwise it was a good scp a very creative one Mind you. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of hiccups from the water I've been drinking. Maybe I've been drinking it too quickly. Um, but other than that, I enjoyed today's SCP video. So if you guys enjoyed today's reaction video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next reaction video. Bye.